Good morning. Uh, here's another uh, brief devotional moment. Huge thanks to Matt for providing some of these. Hopefully they're a blessing uh, to some of you. Really encourage you to uh, interact with them in the comments section. If you have a thought or a question or even a prayer or testimony that comes out of uh, this brief devotional, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to interact with that. Uh, the thought this morning comes from uh, the book of John, chapter 16, verse 32. And it's just an appropriate verse for this moment, I think. It reads like this. Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. Jesus is pointing ahead to this moment when he is about to be uh, arrested, tried, ultimately crucified. And his disciples are going to just flee. They're going to deny him in some cases and run away to their homes and hide out from the authorities. And of course, that's not the place where the church is in now. We're not hiding out from the authorities. We're not scattered uh, by rule of law or in fear of persecution or anything like that at this point, at least not in our part of the world. Um, but we are scattered, hiding from a virus. And uh, we are likely to have moments of feeling uh, quite alone or isolated or just scattered. And Jesus speaks to his disciples and offers them comfort in that moment. And he says, I'm not going to be alone because my father is with me. Now, he's just taught his disciples that he is in the father and the father is in him. And he is in his disciples. Uh, and he's taught about the Holy Spirit and all kinds of uh, ways of bringing forth the idea of their connectedness uh, to God through him. And so what he's saying to them in this moment is that you may be scattered, but you're not going to be alone. Uh, the Father is with you. And I just want to encourage us to walk in the truth of that, in particular around our homes. Your home is meant to be a sanctuary. It's meant to be a place of the dwelling of the presence of God. It's meant to be a place where you can experience peace and rest and comfort and worship and the richness of the word. And that is actually something that you can cultivate. Um, it's not just something that happens. You cultivate it by your prayer life. You cultivate it by what you take into your home with you uh, in terms of what you read, in terms of what you listen to. I want to really encourage you to see the walls of your home as a filter that keep the darkness outside and allow the light of the presence of God to penetrate. That means being aware of your media choices. It means being aware of uh, your thought life. But let your home be seen as holy ground, a holy place. And if it's a holy place, it won't be a lonely place. It'll be a place that's full of joy. Uh, let conversations with your friends come in through the telephone, through Zoom calls, through whatever. But let it be light and life. And don't let the darkness into your home. Let the Father dwell there with you. Make it a hospitable place for the presence of God. And you'll find so much joy. In fact, it might be the richest experience of your life to have this time of isolation. Because it'll force you and encourage you to go deep in your relationship with God. So see your home as a sanctuary. See it as a place where God dwells. And uh, allow him to enter in. It's, it's going to be good. So encouragement to you. No fear. Allow the presence of God in. God bless you. Hope you have an amazing day. Cheers.